Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids, across our beloved empire. Welcome to the Grand Arena Coliseum, where we got a big boy here with us today, Jabba the Hutt. We have a lot of stuff I want to share with you guys. We spent the past three days testing 5v5, 3v3, and we have some initial off-meta testing versus Jabba the Hutt on defense, but by no means do we have a complete picture of him. But so far, I could say this. Usually, initial impressions are important. And my initial impressions of Jabba the Hutt are really, 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 really darn good. The requirements, great. Nothing crazy. A lot of them very helpful requirements. No four relic eight. Nothing absurd. His kit isn't really designed around the altar. You can definitely use him without the ultimate. The, uh, the event itself was fantastic. One of my personal favorites. Definitely on a high. And on top of it all, he's able to counter Jedi Master Kenobi. When I say counter, we're talking hard, hard counter. Wait, what? We're gonna have, we're gonna do a character developer interview. My gosh, Gary, get him on in. We finally are able to get an interview with the one, the only, Death Knight. Well, hello there. Helping us talk about our sponsor, Hooray Shadow Legends. Do you agree that I'm truly the greatest Triple B gamer of all time? Yes, yes, a thousand times, yes! A Death Knight Ultimate coming to Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is running a special campaign in honor of the newest legendary champion, Ultimate Death Knight. You can participate in the Death Knight hunt right now, all the way through October 27th. And my sources are also telling me you're giving away free resources to upgrade Ultimate Death Knight all the way to level 50? Five star ascension? Just type in DK Rises. Use my links down below or scan my QR code and you'll get bonuses worth over $30. All this treasure will be waiting for you right up here. These rewards are only available for the next 30 days. So we got like 30 minutes of gameplay that we're gonna condense in like 15 minutes here. But in case you can't stick around for long, this is what you need to know. In regards to Jabba the Hutt on offense here, so far it looks like he's hard countering Master Kenobi Ray, even some of the best Jedi Master Luke Skywalks, of course. No Datacron testing, I don't believe in that, because 10 years from now, it's not gonna be relevant if we test Datacron, so no Datacron testing, really good counter against SOKR. Kind of a tough battle up against Sith Turtle. It looks like neither of them can really beat each other. It's a very tough battle for both sides of Sith Turtle and Jabba the Hutt, and this is good for Lord Vader. We don't need more Lord Vader counters, or at least at least half the Galactic Legends. Hard counter Lord Vader, and then some can even counter him. And on top of it, we have plenty of off minute counters to Lord Vader. This is like the first Galactic Legend where Lord Vader is like an absolute hard counter. And you're, it looks like you're not really going to get Jabba the Hutt to beat Lord Vader, but we have some funny little tricks if you want to use Fennec lead, I guess. It makes it even better against Lord Vader. But otherwise, the way I'm seeing it right now, Jabba the Hutt, the biggest thing that's selling it for me, he has no lifter unit. His requirements aren't like four relic gates and completely absurd. And you don't really need the ultimate ability. And we're able to hard counter Jedi Master Kenobi and pretty much get maximum banners. 5v5 offense. We'll talk a little about 3v3. More mid into the video here. Still, we got to do a bit more 3v3 testing, but it, it kind of seems like it's a little bit harder in 3v3 for Jabba the Hutt to operate. And that's fine because I'll, I'll admit as well, going into this Jabba the Hutt, I was not expecting him to be as good as he was. I was kind of expecting to be more territory battle raid focused, and he's definitely great in territory battles, at least the ones you have currently. And he's also gonna be more important for the upcoming territory battles as well, but I wanna focus more on the grand arena aspect of things. Overall, how he's working, he's making the Hut cartel extremely durable, extremely thick, has ways to kind of weed out the Commander Tano insta kilts for you to keep your team around, get maximum banners, and all that really happens is the core of the job of the Hut team is, of course, job of the Hut, Kersanthan, Bauschleia. Now we can talk about the last two slots. I definitely think there's a bit of flexibility, but the other great thing is too, the best job of the Hut team it's more or less kind of all the stuff you're putting together to get job of the hut. Although Embo has been really darn good. We'll talk about that as well. Again, I think even in territories, we're going to get a lot more viability out of Jabba the Hutt. But the reason why I think that's the core trio for 3v3, even 5v5 is Jabba the Hutt, the Galactic Legend leading, of course, Kersantan, incredibly durable tank. He's not really doing a lot except just being extremely durable. And that's the role of a tank. Sometimes we think that tanks need to be doing absurd things like Malak or Malgus. That's not the case. Sits there crazy high amount of health protection on uh Kersantan, and he's able to revive without even an omicron active when there's a full hut cartel team when jabba's leading or even any hut cartel Kersantan will come back alive after commander tano gets that insta kill on them and bausch Leia, very important probably the most important thing a little bit more important than Kersantan, primarily because she's what gets jabba's contract 
really going. Lots of thermal detonators, tons of assisting because the overall arching theme of Job of the Hut, kind of outliving your opponent, controlling them through Bausch Lea's unique ability, getting the thermal detonators to apply. And when you're attacking enemies, every single time you're attacking an enemy with a thermal detonator, you're making progress towards contract. And once you hit that contract, all of a sudden we're seeing crazy amounts of mastery increases damage increases across the board letting him do some extremely nasty plays and without Bauschlea, i don't think you're gonna really get that far last few slots are kind of up in the grabs uh, uh of course skip card lando's great skip card lando's kind of just like a hawks a little bit lesser version of a hawks i feel like but nonetheless being able to pass over a bonus turn to java can create some really key moments for the plays here also embo my gosh embo it's always been a meme here in the channel Embo is the real deal, and now people are rushing to get Omicrons on Embo, making sure he's relicked up, because this guy is going to do absurd damage, especially because his Kyozo War Helmet does extra damage based on his protection on this team. This is a very health protection-based team. Embo's going to hit for hundreds of thousands of damage. My record so far has been over 200 thousand damage able to do a lot of great work up against a variety of these galactic legends but you are going to have flexibility but i do want to emphasize you don't want to go too far away from a hut cartel team people are like oh why not throw in zam why not throw in Man mando you could of course there are there are synergies to be had but what's incredibly important with this team is the second you step away from full hut cartel you're losing a lot of bonuses and i just want to bring up bausley as one of the many examples on this hut cartel team with bausley if all allies were hut cartel at the very beginning Deadly Bluff, which automatically applies to the enemy team right at the very get-go when Bausch is uh, on the field here, they can't attack on a turn. So Ahsoka Tano can't assist Master Kenobi, for example, or any other people on the uh, Jedi Master Kenobi team. Or, for example, you can't have Master Luke calling people to attack on a turn. Incredibly important. And if they have Thermal Detonators, which Jabba the Hutt usually opens up with a ton of Thermal Detonators, they're going to lose 25 speed, which gives you that kind of fake 55 extra speed with the job of the hut leadership ability. So that's why you really don't want to go outside of hut cartel. And even so with Chrysanthem, when you're going outside of hut cartel, all of a sudden you're losing a lot of benefits that Chrysanthem comes along with here. For example, with Chrysanthem, which is, I, I, I do find better than Gamoran Guard by a long mile. I know people want Gamoran Guard to be on here. I don't quite see Gamoran Guard being very helpful, but when you have a full hut cartel team, there's a lot of bonuses, but the most important one is he pre-taunts. And whenever he loses taunts, he gains it back for one turn if the ally in the leader slot has 50% protection, which is Jabba. And the great thing is with Jabba, likely you're not going to be able to target him when you got all these hut cartel members of hired muscle on them. So this makes me the almost of a permataunt situation of Kersanthan. And that's, again, why, of course, we can get a little cheeky and be like, oh, yeah, Zam might be cool to boost all the bounty hunter stats. It's not better than all the hut cartel bonuses that are lingering here. I wanna talk more about some of the Galactic Legends stuff here that you're seeing here. So the reason why I'm feeling Lord Vader is not gonna be in trouble with Jabba the Hutt, and that's fine. Not every Galactic Legend needs to just stomp the ground. Master Kenobi pretty much hard counters everything. We don't need every Galactic Legend to be like Jedi Master Kenobi. I'm kind of secretly happy Master Kenobi's finally getting something to put him in his place because he makes the other Galactic Legends not look nearly as good. And the fact you don't need a lifter unit, to do it is pretty crazy. Same thing if Ray, her ultimate, her sudden whirlwind doesn't really do all that much up against Jabba the Hutt because they're so darn durable. We got revive mechanism, tons of health protection recovery. Uh, Jedi Master Luke, they stopping the attacks on a turn, even when they have Jedi Revan to ignore taunt, doesn't seem to really do all that much. Jabba the Hutt, once he gets that thermal detonators out, gets buff immunity, you can easily navigate your way around taunting tanks. And once those thermal detonators start piling up, the team just pretty much self implodes at that point. So Primitive Kyle Run, pretty straightforward battle for the most part. SOKR seems like he's kind of, uh, he's able to stick around, not getting completely uh, stomped on and is able to counter Jabba the Hutt, it looks like as well. If he had to go fight him from uh, SOKR versus a Jabba perspective, Sith Eternal is really weird. They both kind of seem on par. It's the first Galactic Legend where Sith Eternal actually put up a good fight uh, against them. And you can't just do Jabba the Hutt solo versus Sith Eternal. Normally you could do like a solo Galactic Legend versus Sith Eternal, but Jabba the Hutt's not really a great solo based character. He needs other characters to do the work for him. And it, usually every time I do the battle, most of the time, it, unless you got a, you're lucky to get a couple people sticking around like Embo or Kersanthan to help you take on Sith Eternal at the very end it just turns into a staring contest and neither one of them beats him so i probably don't feel comfortable using sith eternal against java or java against eternal and lord vader's pretty short and simple the reason why it doesn't work you can't apply thermal detonators really can't do anything of damage over times on a lord vader team and when thermal detonators are the core aspect of getting the kit going you need to get them on and lord vader just won't let you so that's a situation where i see java not really beating lord vader but if you do fennec 
It gets really interesting because Fennec contract hits instantly. Jabba the Hutt can still passively provide bonuses for the team on a crazy extent. And on top of that, Jabba's able to call like random bounty hunters to assist. You're going to get Fennec to assist a ton. And it's like pretty much like non-stop calling Dark Trooper for the assist and Lord Vader gets stopped. But at that point, why are you bringing in Jabba? Because we already know Fennec can beat Lord Vader. It's the hard counter to Lord Vader with without data crumbs, whatever the case might be. You don't need Jabba the Hutt for that. They have Jabba the Hutt stick with full Hutt cartel, but just goes to show that Lord Vader, I think, is very safe from this Galactic Legend right now, unless you do something with the Fennec orientation here. In 3v3, um, I, I can't say I'm quite as impressed in 3v3. So far, it seems like he does well against uh, Jedi Master Luke. He does well against Rey. Kenobi's a lot trickier. So, uh, Superior to Kyle Ren's a lot trickier. Sith Eternal is about the same, and you can't beat Lord Vader. So I'm not seeing him being great in 3v3, at least as of now. We got to maybe do a little bit more experimentation. We also do not have the Chrysanthemum Omicron turned on for Jabba that's that's a lot of extra viability that we're possibly leaving off the table here for Grand which was just going to increase Chris Santa's durability by a heck of a lot more on top of what you're already seeing which uh, Relic 5 Chris Santa inside this gameplay here but I think it's a great balance he's taking on some of the top talent Kenobi Ray Master Luke Supreme Leader Kylo he's gonna be fantastic in territory battles we did we did a phase three run it's again nothing too much to brag about but it was so easy it literally you don't have to think about doing anything you just go in and you just have a good time and you're gonna win at the very end of the day and it's a team that didn't exist before so it's another team for genos and territorial's dark side which isn't that important but of course you know java's gonna get exclusive nodes inside of territorial's and of course we have the new territory battle sometime later on this year especially if mixed affiliations you're, you're, you're gonna need java for all these type of events so i think he's just extremely well balanced for galactic legend his event was spectacular i'm not mad about the requirements a lot of these requirements are helpful like the most expensive thing is a relegate han solo but you're gonna want to relegate han solo and on defense in terms of off meta counters we're still uh, learning more we're definitely early stages i'll probably come up with another video showing more in-depth counters in a 5v5 situation here he's kind of doing all right up against non gl stuff gas can't stop him fun fact java stops pretty much crazy amounts of protection recovery so gas is kind of like a sit eternal battle where when Sith Eternal gets gas down, he never gets up. Jabba's kind of like that, where when gas gets knocked down, it takes him a long time to get up because his protection recovery, it's extremely slow. So uh, the only thing that kind of came close so far, it seems like Bad Batch might have a good opportunity to take him out, especially of days. Because remember, when you're getting turn meter, Jabba's team gets turn meter as well. Getting the days on him stops that, and you got the defense up at play here. So I think uh, we're gonna have a good opportunity with that. We have uh, my, my squad arena mate, Gucci, who's kind of to do some battles up against my Jabba again very early testing stuff they did some data cron stuff which that's very temporary you're not going to have Jabba the Hutt versus all these data cron teams for that much longer so that's why you know it take take the data crons with a grain of salt for what it stands Grievous kind of got close again kind of like a Sith Eternal battle once you get the target lock spreading you're running a turn meter train but Jabba is also keeping up with your turn meter gains for the most part not quite as much you're able to at least it seems break apart the team damage it quite a lot and hopefully clean it up here so that's something that's going to be kind of uh something to keep on the table uh, so i think we definitely have a little bit of time to figure out what's going out of java before 5v5 grand arenas and territory wars come back around here but overall uh this is definitely um i think it helped that i kind of went in with low expectations based off the requirements based off what i think of java and these are the results java's looking really darn good i feel confident if you're someone that especially since these requirements kind of weave into a bunch of different directions like you know outrider and han solo that's gonna be great for the profundity fleet jedi knight luke skywalker it's great stuff a lot of these requirements bake into the actual hud cartel team you're gonna end up using here really the worst requirements are kind of jawa and but at least you can use them in a funny jawa team or a tuscan omicron team it's a great package i think cg nailed it and i didn't even talk about really the altered ability that much you don't really need it it feels like this is one of those characters where unlike sith Turtle, where it's a little bit of a struggle to use them before ultimate lord vader's kind of a struggle before ultimate most of the galactic legends you kind of need the ultimate here the ultimate takes so long to charge and by the time you use it, it's more of a convenience for banner recovery because you're going to get all your health protection back and it just instant kills so it kind of speeds the process up but it does take a little bit of time to get to that ultimate ability because you don't really have a ton of time to get that ultimate charge it takes a bit of time but the nice thing is it's repetitive it's great for territory battles that happens really quickly in territory battles it seems so i like it it's a great galactic legend it's fantastic i think cg nailed it i'm kind of surprised especially this year i've been disappointed with things like inquisitors for example last galactic legend war video is very steep very expensive and i honestly kind of find job of the hut a little bit more enjoyable than lord vader but again that's because perspective the cost of getting lord vader is not nearly as high for four relegates on lord vader you expect a lot more i was not expecting that much because of 
the Lord Vader when looking at Jabba, and man, was I surprised. So for initial impressions, I'm liking Jabba. Ultimate's one of my favorite animations. I think they nailed it. Event was fun. Characters, a ton of fun. The team's baked into the requirements, and it's beating the best galactic legend, Jedi Master Kenobi, for tons of banners. So thank you so much for stopping by. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a like, comment down below. Be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And always remember that it's great to be in the Empire today.